Hey everyone, this is Dr. O'Malley with The Laceration Course. In this video, we are going to talk about the running suture, the continuous suture, or the baseball stitch. All right, you can see this image here, uh, several different names for it. Uh, basically, the running suture, for the most part, is probably going to be seen more commonly on large wounds. Uh, it's fast. It saves time. I think general sur surgeons may use this on some large external closures as well. Now, I can tell you from experience, it's great when you are a busy intern on the trauma service, but it does have some pitfalls associated with it. Biggest thing is that you can't evenly control tension across the entire length of the wound. I'm not going to say that you can't, but it is more difficult. So, um, that is something to uh, to keep in mind, especially uh, if you have a wound that may be of varying widths, depths, and uh, degrees of tension. Uh, scarring is felt to be the same as with interrupted sutures, uh, but another pitfall is that if you get a wound infection, you're going to have to remove the entire length of the suture as opposed to if you're using interrupted or maybe even like a horizontal vertical mattress, you might be able to take out one or two sutures, but if you're using only a continuous suture down the length of the wound, um, if you have any complications or any issues, you're gonna have to remove the whole thing, therefore uh, opening up the wound, wound dehiscence and things like that. All right, so let's try this out. You want to start at the end and you do an instrument tie. It's a simple suture, all right? So I'm gonna go on this tissue defect right here, and I'm gonna start off again, as with previous videos, I'm gonna hammer this home every single time. You're using your tissue forceps. You've already locked your needle in, so technically don't even really have to hold it with my thumb and uh, ring finger. <clears throat> and I'm gonna start off here, and I am going to do an instrument tie, okay? And come across here. See what I did? I didn't do that all in one uh, turn of the wrist. So I came back, I kind of exposed my needle to see where it was, and I'm gonna use my tissue forceps to stabilize. Go through, and I'm going to do our old friend, the instrument tie surgeon's knot, back and forth, pulling the tail to me. And then away from me. And I'm going to do this a couple of times here so I can get a good solid anchor. This is my anchor knot, anchor suture here. Okay. Now, if I were doing an interrupted suture, I would just cut this. Okay. But what I am doing is a continuous suture. So I'm going to practice what I preach. And I'm going to reload my needle driver here. And I want to keep the suture thread out of the way, back over here. And I'm going to put my suture needle through, use my tissue forceps, and pass it along. Take the needle driver, pull the needle through. Okay, and the things that I want you to focus on and really look at here is to make sure that your needle entry and needle exit are in the same planes, okay? Imagine that you were doing an interrupted suture right here. So you want that to line up and be nice and straight so that when you are pulling your skin together, it's coming together. It's not all out of whack. Uh, at different um, different lengths along the um, edges of your wound, okay? So now I'm going to pull this down, okay? The thing that kind of looks weird with this is that you've got your, your first suture and then you're kind of pulling it off to the side and now whenever I go for my next one, I'm going to use my tissue forceps to stabilize, enter at 90 degrees, go through, stabilize on the opposite side. And again, I could, I could see myself kind of going off perpendicular there. 
So I want to make sure that I'm going in the proper orientation. So that may mean that I need to, you know, kind of alter my body mechanics. I may need to adjust my wrist and push it out to the side a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna use my needle driver, stabilize and push through. All right, so just as with the interrupted suture, we wanna make sure that we are being symmetric, okay? So the spacing between our sutures should be the same on each side. All right, I'm reloading. Again, not using my fingers. I'm pulling the thread away from me out of, out of, uh, out of the way so I don't get caught up in it. Okay, I'm going to introduce my needle, 90 degrees, come across, and I want to be perpendicular. All right, come through, grab the needle. Now, what you'll see is that your the suture that is going through here, I'm gonna open this up so you can see it. The suture that is actually exiting and entering the dermal layer, okay, that is in a straight line across. The suture string that is going on externally across the wound is what's kind of the diagonal, okay? So it may look like things are kind of out of whack or, you know, improperly aligned. They're not. It's just you are visualizing the external component of the suture as opposed to the uh, dermal layer of the suture. All right, so we're going to do a couple more of these. All right, I'm going to... Stabilize the tissue, 90 degrees. All right, and again, I want to be perpendicular to the wound, and I wanna try and get the spacing between the sutures to be the same. All right, and so far that looks like it is. I'm, I'm happy with this. It looks good. Reloading the needle, okay. And I'm going to do probably about two more here. All right, so again, this is a time saver. It allows you to um, put in sutures quickly. Another reason you may want to do this is if you've got a large scalp wound, um, if you don't have a stapler, or if you've got something that's bleeding, you really just need to get a couple stitches in there to control it. This is another good quick and easy stitch. Sometimes you'll throw what's called a running locking stitch, which we'll talk about later. All right. Uh, but this is just a good way to cover a lot of ground quickly. All right. This is going to be my last one. And then I'm going to show you a couple things. So I'm going to enter the skin 90 degrees, come out across. Try to get as perpendicular as I can. All right. So this time I'm going to leave this last loop loose. Okay. This is what is going to serve as my tail as if I were doing an uh, uh, just a, a simple instrument tie, okay? I'm not gonna do the, finish this off yet, but I'm just gonna show you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap around twice. I wanna grab kind of the apex. I wanna grab the top of that loop so that when I pull it down and across, it lays down flat. Now, I'm gonna show some things that you may encounter. So sometimes you may get some laxity or some over tightening in the run of your suture here. So what you can do is you've got a few extra instruments over here, okay? So let's say this suture is, is pulled up like that. All right, so what I can do is come over here and kind of pull that down, pull that down, okay? And just kind of play with it. Sometimes you just have to uh, kind of play around with it and get things to lay down 
nice and flat, nice and smooth. Again, what's our goal? Symmetry. That's what we're wanting for all of this stuff is for things to be symmetric so that we can give these wounds a proper chance at healing, okay? So I'm gonna pull this out just to demonstrate again. Uh, we're gonna close this off. So this is your continuous, uh, your running suture or your baseball stitch. I'm going to put my needle driver down, wrap it two times, grab the loop, and pull it down, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna wrap, pull away. Remember that whole away, two, away, two. So we're going back and forth every single time. Wrap around, pull, go across. And I'm gonna do one more for good measure, okay? So that is our running suture. I'm gonna tie the, or uh, cut off the loops there. All right, so externally, you know, this may not look quite as neat and as clean just because of the uh, the, the knots and, and, and whatnot and the fact that the external visual aspect of the suture is kind of going across uh, at an angle. Um, but it's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a good suture for you to be familiar with and know how to do. Now, whatever goes in must come out. So we're going to talk about how to remove the uh, running suture. All right. Um, first and foremost, you don't want to uh, accidentally leave any suture material in here. The second thing is that this thing's long. I mean, you've probably got several inches of suture material. So if you're going to pull out a long aspect of this, you may need to cut it in the middle once or twice uh, just so that you don't have such a long uh, component of, of uh, material because it, it, it can be pretty painful. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here. I'm going to grab the suture material and I'm going to cut down here towards the skin, okay? So that goes through, all right? So basically I have freed this component of it up and then I'm going to come over here. I'm just gonna use my tissue forcep. All right, kind of same thing. I'm just going to snip this component right there. So that comes through. Now I'm going to have to cut another edge. All right, so now basically what I've got is two knots that are going to prevent me from uh, sliding this all through. So I'm gonna cut this knot down here like that, move that out of the way. And then what I can do is I can pull this all the way through. Now, this kind of illustrates what happens in human tissue, but also with the silicone pad. If you're gonna be pulling this much out, you may end up damaging the pad. So here's what I'm gonna do just to illustrate uh, a different technique. I'm gonna cut it right here in the middle. And then that makes it much easier to remove that end. And then I can do this right here, I can kind of pull that through just like that. All right, so that is the continuous running suture, uh, whatever name you want to call it, baseball stitch, and then also the suture removal for that. Now that wraps up this video on that suture, and I want to thank you for joining, and we will see you next time. Hey everyone, this is Dr. O'Malley with the Laceration Course. If you truly want to master the art of suturing and laceration management, you need my course. What we talk about in these videos here on YouTube really only scratches the surface. This online course has everything that you must know in order to take care of patients with lacerations. You can get the course with or without CME credit. We talk about everything that you need to know to properly manage lacerations, including anatomy, pharmacology, microbiology, advanced suture techniques, and so much more. If you're a student or a resident and really want to stand out on your clinical rotations, you need this course. Bottom line is that we're all here to learn how to be able to provide for better patient care. For more information, go to www.thelacerationcourse.com slash YORSI, where you can learn more about a 25% off discount for YORSI Practice Suture Kit customers. Don't forget to subscribe to The Laceration Course on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.